Um, let's see. While we're waiting for a couple more people to check in, let's get some updates from some of our property managers since like Spring Hills on the line. Gail, do you want to go ahead and give us an update from um, Spring Hills, the rest and everything? Yeah, sure, sure. So, um, wow, <laughs> the floodgates have opened. <laughs> We uh, have had a really, really good uh, two weeks. Occupancy has been very, very high. Jacob, would you grab that door for me, please? Thank you. Uh, occupancy is very, very high. Um, of course, we haven't been able to do any weddings because of the 10-person restriction. Um, our next one is going to be June 6th, and um, that wedding will be uh, 11 people, so... We will social distance properly. So tiny weddings are popping up left and right, which is kind of cute, I think. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, the restaurant reopened a couple of weeks ago to limited occupancy and to-go orders. Um, we are stretching our wings and getting closer to being fully operational. Our menu uh, is fabulous. We've expanded our menu. And um, right now we're open from 11 a.m. until 8 p.m. Um, doing some indoor dining and outdoor dining, but it's a uh, it's feeling like you know Navarre in the summer again around here. So happy to see the babies back. People are smiling. Um, it's good. It's very good. Awesome, awesome. So, like, can you go there and just have a drink? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, our indoor bar uh, called White Caps is going to uh, start opening uh, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays this week. So we'll have both of our bars open. And will they be open the same time, 11 to 8, or just in the evening? Uh, it, they'll be open during the day for pool service. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Gail. You're welcome. Let's see who else is on here? Um, Rick. Do you want to give us a short update from the twist? You have to unmic yourself. We can't hear you. Is that what you said? Unmute yourself? Yes. Uh, so like I said the other day, the twist is open seven days, window service only right now, and that will continue through this weekend. Uh, she is not quite ready to um, open up the um, dining room area, but you can still walk up and order. All menu items are available, and um, I mean, that's about it. It's uh, definitely been busy, and we're expecting, you know, weather permitting, we'll have a, a really strong Memorial Day weekend over there. So, thank you. Thank you. It's hard to believe it's Memorial Day weekend. I think um, Monica and I were out visiting some people yesterday, and we mentioned Memorial Day weekend. Everybody's like, what? <laughs> So I think with everything going on, that was the last thing people were really thinking about, unless you were Gail at Spring Hill Creek. It feels like it's a week early this year, though. It just feels like it's earlier in the calendar than it normally is. Yeah, it probably is. It probably is. Well, um, we'll get the rest of the updates after um, Julie talks, but we're, uh, we might have missed Julie. We'll do another update. Courtney. Do you want to give us an update from um, Navarre Family Water Sports? Absolutely, yeah. So we're open, full functioning. The water park is in. Um, we also have a brand new putt putt course. It's really nice up there. Uh, we put a seawall in, so we have more of a beach area to sit, but we're still practicing like the social distancing rules. So we're not really encouraging people to be on our beach, but everything's up and going. And of course, Jeff is back with Fly the Boat. So it's exciting. And of course, Shark Bite, I'll go ahead and speak for them too. They're open as well. They've just been op opening for breakfast and kind of going until they sell out, but I think they're going to um, continue to stay open as well. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, Julie's back. <laughs> we appreciate having Julie White with the Santa Rosa County Tourist Development Office. And I hope everyone got a document that I emailed 
or posted for the restaurant. It's about um, something she's going to be talking about. And I'll see if I can uh, share my screen while you're talking, if you want me to. Or can you talk without it? Um, no, I, I've got it on my other okay. one. So All I'm right. good. I'll let you yeah. talk because there's no pretty pictures or anything. <laughs> Thanks, Shanda. Um, so I guess everybody knows that <clears throat> short-term rentals, we're allowed to start renting again uh, this week, except to certain states. And so uh, they've been doing a, a really good job of trying to maneuver through that. I know it's tough right now for them um, having restrictions on where they can rent to, but at least we are in motion in, in the right way. Um, the document that I sent Shanda that she can distribute to anybody who wants it is our Santa Rosa County Partner Relaunch Program suggestions as a whole so that any tourism type business in the county can understand like the direction we're going and that might be the same direction they want to be in you know what i'm saying um like as far as social media goes how to handle certain questions communication guidelines for instance um in the document it talks about communication guidelines and so what we're going to stick to and we suggest that everybody else sticks to, and if we collectively kind of do the same thing together with your social media and any type of advertising you're doing, it makes a, a bigger, you know, packs a bigger punch when it's a destination together, all communicating the same thing to people. Um, so we're gonna be, our messaging is, is solely gonna be around stressing the warm, fresh air, uncrowded, spacious beaches, healthy choices in food, exercise, and relaxation. Those, um, time and time again, when we pull our analytics and our data, the, the folks that our ads resonate to, and this is over the last several years, are these people, the people that are interested in this, in health, exercise, wellness. Um, so we know who our market is, and we know where they come from, but, if we do it the right way, um, it makes it makes it more attractive to the people that we're targeting because we already know their psyche of what they like, and so we're pushing out to them, reminding them of what we are, and what we're pushing out is what we are, and so we're thankful that we are not a crowded destination. And um, you know, everybody on this call knows that Navarre is um, unique in that it kind of already is social distanced anyways, you know, it's not a crowded atmosphere. So we're fortunate with that. But it goes through in here about food service and um, if people ask questions like on social media, how to answer them. Because if, you, if we kind of stay uniform in our answers, it'll just be better. Um, and it talks about outdoor activities for spaces like the Coldwater Creek or Blackwater River, Navarre Beach, the Pier, Soundside, you know, um, saying make sure that the statement for the county is present on your website or, or whatnot. And so there's some examples that you can go by with some links. So you might want to update your website to make sure it matches our website. You know, this is, these are all suggestions. And then it talks about also indoor activities, um, how to, you know, if people ask questions about that. And so, and people are, people are, you know, different, everybody's different and that's okay. Some people are, are gonna travel, some are not gonna travel. Like I've said all along, we're on the road to lose at least a million and a half dollars this year. So that tells me right there that uh, we know we've already lost money, but we're gonna continue losing money because it's just not gonna be back like it was. Probably for a year and a half is my guess. Not this summer, maybe maybe next summer it'll start getting closer to normal. Um, but also, any social media needs to be provided to Monica in our department. And any press information on this document at the very last page, it gives Tara Tofu, it's her email address at our ad agency. So if you're gonna do a press release, you should copy her on it as well because it makes sense if if you're 
because you know that we have the bigger ad spend and the dollars to back behind that. So if you'll utilize us in that fashion, we can help you more. This doesn't cost you anything, of course, but if you'll just make sure and send your social media content to Monica, your press information to that lady that's on this document. And um, another key important thing is to make sure that your information is up to date on TripAdvisor because as probably most of you know, TripAdvisor is a huge platform and we advertise on TripAdvisor, but it's really important to make sure that you are answering people on TripAdvisor or whatnot. So make sure all your information is up to date. Make sure and answer, answer people on TripAdvisor. Just because right now things are, <clears throat> what's about to happen is things are going to get, people are going to get over bombarded as a consumer with travel content. It's already starting to happen because people are starting to advertise slowly. June 1, when we do our camp, when we relaunch our campaign, I guarantee you everybody across the Gulf Coast is relaunching their, their campaign as well. So we're not going to be the only ones. It's going to be a lot of people in the United States relaunching, trying to get people to come to their destination and spend money. So that was a challenge of how do we maneuver through that because we don't want to get lost in the crowd, you know? And so we, cause some of these people, you know, um, like let's say Walton County, they have a huge budget compared to ours. So how do we not get lost in the crowd, but still push out the same type of message as all of our friends across, across the Gulf Coast are going to. So that's where we reiterated. We got to stick to who we are, what we are, what we know, who we know comes here. And we got to catch those visitors that we know have already came here and obviously would entertain coming back and strategically can drive here, you know? So that's, we have a very thorough campaign when it relaunches and it, and as it relaunches, it's some money's going to some markets earlier than the others. We had to do it this way uh, strategically for reasons like the military can't travel yet and stuff like that. So we didn't want anything going into the Columbus market until, you know, we know they're able to travel and stuff like that. So we're being very strategic how we're doing this. Um, in that document though, some potential partner promotions would be like you guys having uh, welcome back weekends. So maybe, you know, I don't, I don't know who's all on this call right now, but if there's any vacation rental companies, that would be a really great suggestion. Advertising, promoting it as a welcome back weekend or a wellness break or a family getaway, which we all know family getaways are popular. And so they're going to be pushed everywhere, but a wellness break or a welcome back weekend, those were a couple of things that we came up with that were kind of unique. And so we thought they would resonate with people, especially with everything that's went on. And so you might want to piggyback off of us. Those are our messages we're going to be sending out. Um, and our paid media plan will be geared to two segments, which is segment one, resilient travelers who have, who'll be, they're going to be the first ones to travel. They probably already have started and they're actively looking for bookings and likely skewed towards younger millennial audience. And then our reluctant travelers who are a little more hesitant to travel and need more inspiration and reassurance. So those are the two audiences we are going after right now. We are not right now, Courtney, it is the reluctant traveler audience, the re resilient and reluctant. So right now we're not going after, um, we're going after like generation Xers and millennials and stuff like that. So we're being very specific, okay? Um, what age group we go after right now, just because. So does anybody have any specific questions for me about what we're doing as, as a whole or what you can do besides look over that document really well <laughs> and then send any informations or questions or information, whatnot to us and we can sift through it and help you however we can. Does anybody have any particular questions? I think if we're going to go ahead and try to say uniform, you said three really good things. Welcome back weekend, wellness break, and what was the third one? Family what? Getaway. Okay, so maybe we can make those hashtags, and when we all 
get ready to start posting, make sure that we maybe kind of right those hashtags. <laughs> right. That's a good idea, Courtney. And then also, um, whoever's willing to tag each other in our post on social media, I think that would be a good idea too. I'm always hesitant to tag because you really don't know if people get annoyed by that or not. But if we're all willing, we could all tag each other. And I know Monica does a great job with that. And so does Miss Chanda. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a good idea for you for partners to do. Absolutely. Hey, Julie, I have a question for you. Um, speaking of social media, you may have seen the Alabama.com article, the 24 hours in Navarre Beach. Was that yeah. something that you guys generated or where did that come from? Yeah, so Verna Gates, she's our one of our travel writers that was here. Monica from my office took her around and helped her. Yeah, that was one of our travel writers. Okay, great. Right. Yeah. I, I've, I've shared it. And I know some other people have shared it. And um, so was that something that y'all were planning on coming out with right now? Or is that something that's going to also maybe repost later? No, it was and to come out right now and it'll be utilized again later. It'll be recycled later. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then this is more from a property manager, property owner question. I know that the property managers have to report their, you know, where their people are coming from. What happens with that information? Uh, I review it. And? And make sure you're no <laughs> booking from Louisiana <laughs> or Michigan or okay. Connecticut. <laughs> Just wondered. <laughs> I'm not the police or anything, obviously. I don't look like the police, but it's not my job to police this, but it is my job to review it. Well, I think it will be interesting to see, especially initially, where are the renters coming from, right? I mean, that's data for us, you know? It will be. It's, it's um, information, let alone for my ad agency. They want oh. that too, you know? I mean, because here's why. And I've preached about this for years. If everybody would give us their zip codes on a monthly basis, then we would know if where we put our money first, like we would have an extra layer of, yes, check, we did put extra money in this market this uh, season and we had extra people coming from Little Rock. We, can, we see it. And so this zip code database stuff is priceless to my department, you know? I wish I could talk everybody into it to, to give to me on a regular basis because in the end, it only helps everybody who's running here because it helps my ad agency to say, oh, we're seeing an uptick in people from this city. So maybe we need to start putting more money into this city, you know, like Jackson, Mississippi, like we have, or, you know, so we, and we have to rely on other information, but if we had that, yeah, Corey, it sure does. Poor old Monica. She's, Corey made a comment on there that it beats walking the parking lot taking license plates. Back a long time ago when Monica was a student worker, I had to have her do that because we couldn't get any zip codes. <laughs> and Monica was so good to do that. But, you know, I mean, we need this kind of information because, again, it rubber stamps in our heads like, yes, we are doing the right thing. We know we're doing the right thing. So... So yeah, that's what I'm going to do, Gretchen. I'm going to be reviewing it because I, I want to know where they're coming from. My ad agency, I'm going to share it with them, you know, because they want to know where people are coming from. And especially in, a, in an odd time like this, it tells us even more when we have certain people coming from certain places. Like what, is it new people coming to here? Is it, you know, so it's going to be interesting to see. So other than Louisiana, the ones that are excluded are you concerned that we're going to be missing really any too big of a, of a market? I mean, I know we do get a lot of people from Louisiana, but the other states, are you people from Illinois? You know, we do. Um, but the majority of our visitors come from Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky. So, it's Louisiana that is obviously, you know, yeah. it's, that's, that's what we're going to feel the hit 
and because they're really wanting to come here. I know they are. We're getting calls from them, and they're angry that they can't come here. But it's not just us. They can't come anywhere across the panhandle. You know? Now, they can go to a hotel. They can go to Gales Spring Hill Suites, or they can go to the Days Inn, or they can go to Best Western, or, or Hampton Inn at Debbie's. But they're supposed to quarantine for 14 days. But again, I'm, I mean, we're not the police, and we can't, you know, we can only tell people what they're supposed to do. Shanda, you're muted. I'm having an issue. You'll be so surprised I got a new microphone and it does not work. <laughs> uh, no, not surprised. <laughs> um, oh, how about the RV part? Like someone called from Louisiana and I, they were coming this weekend and they said, we're coming from Louisiana, are we gonna have to do anything special? No. As so far as quarantine. Yeah, the, um, the police at the checkpoint on I-10 will tell them what they need to do. And I think it's you're supposed to quarantine for 14 days. They can go to the RV parks. They can go to the hotels. They're just supposed to, per the governor, quarantine for 14 days. Right. So and I know we have an issue that we're going to take. I talked with my boss, Dan Shebler, and we're going to talk about it next week at the Board of County Commissioner meeting. We have a problem because some people live in Northwest Louisiana where there's no cases virtually and want to come here, but they can't because they're lumped in with right. New Orleans. So we're going to try and discuss this issue and possibly resubmit a new plan to um, the Department of Business Regulations. We're gonna talk about it next week, the Board of County Commissioners. I just got off phone with him a couple hours ago because it's an issue that we're running into. It's not that we, Right now, we don't want anybody here from New Orleans. I mean, we don't want to spread coronavirus here in the bar. But if you're from a county that is farther away and doesn't have any, then that's, you know. So we're going to work on how to, how to figure this out. But regardless, I think in a, within 45 days, most likely, the gates will be open for anybody to be here. Like, does that factor in July 4th, 45 days? It, it's really going to depend on the governor, <laughs> you know. Yeah. He, when he goes to phase three, which I feel like it'll be to phase three before the 4th of July, you know, I just, I feel like it will. When he goes to phase three, it's anybody can do uh, travel, period, you know. Mm-hmm. So we're in what's now he calls a modified phase one, um, which I didn't know there was going to be a modified phase one. And so now we are, but there is, and we're in it. So I guess now we wait for phase two. And then I don't know if he'll just do a phase two for two weeks or if he'll end up doing a modified. I'm not really sure. Obviously, he's going to take the best approach for our state to keep us healthy. And I respect that. Julie, question for you. Um, you mentioned a couple of times that uh, visitors from the hot spots, we'll just call them the hot spots instead of singling out New Orleans, um, are supposed to uh, um, quarantine for 14 days. Is that a self-quarantine at home prior to travel, or is there some other procedure? How is how is that being handled? Like, Oakle when they cross the state line and they get pulled over at the checkpoint, they're supposed to the the state police tell them there's wherever they're going whether it's Navarre Beach, uh, the Best Western here in Navarre, let's say they say, I'm going to the Best Western in Navarre. Then the police tell them, you need to quarantine at the Navarre Best Western for 14 days. That's what happens. In other words, they have to stay for two weeks? Yep. That's impractical. Well, no, you know, to be clear, the, to be clear, the executive order says um, for 14 days or for whenever they leave the state, whichever comes first. So if they're only staying here for five days, they would have to be quarantined for the full five days and then they could leave. But that's sort so of how the executive order is So you can come and stay in a room, but you can't written. do anything, right? Is that Basically. what I'm hearing? Amy, yep. are you sure? Yeah, I read the executive order when it initially came out. 
Um, so if they're not going to be here for 14 days, they do not have to quarantine for 14 days here, but they would stay in quarantine for the entirety that they're here. And then when they leave, they would just have to leave. It's so it, it's in other words, you don't have to stay here for two weeks, but you will be in quarantine for 14 days if you are in the state for 14 days. Okay. If that makes sense. It does, but that's not the way I understood it. But if you know for sure, then we'll go with that. Yes. That's what I, it, it says, you know how in legal documents they'll say whichever comes first. Yes. So your plan day to leave. Right. Or 14 days. But right. basically you don't come out of quarantine. If you're only staying here for five days, it's not like you come out of quarantine. It just means that you get in your car and then you leave the state of Florida. Gotcha. But if so, you're here, you have to stay in quarantine. Right. Regardless, um, right now is just not obviously the time for anybody to be coming from New Orleans or from Louisiana or any hot spot because they're going to be quarantined unless they're staying longer than two weeks, obviously. Rick, to answer your question, I'm sorry. And that means no going to the beach. Right. But it's just an honor policy, really. Mm -hmm. Yes. So technically speaking, they can come. They just can't do anything while they're here. So. Yes. But the RV rentals are not allowed to rent to them, though, now. So they can come here and go to a hotel or a campground, but not to right. a camp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And thank you for the uh, link, Nicole. I was over reading that when you started talking to me directly a second ago. <laughs> so. And I just wanted to make a clarification on the, the, the if violations of an executive order in the state of Florida are considered a second degree misdemeanor. Um, but it's the issue of how do you really enforce that? Is somebody going to go along the beach and verify driver's licenses? Are you from Louisiana? Um, but hypothetically, the, lead, the law says that it is a second-degree misdemeanor if you do violate the quarantine order. Right. And I think I heard somewhere, like, if someone lodges a complaint, like if a group were being unruly and the police had to be called and it came out that they were here, did I hear it's a $500 fine somewhere? A second degree misdemeanor in the state of Florida can be punishable by up to 60 days in jail and a fi up to a $500 fine. So yes, Shanda. So they should behave if they're here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone behaves in the bar. But... Okay, does anyone else have any questions for Julie? That was a lot of great information. I did have, who did you say like um, press releases should go to, Monica? No, um, it's in that document on the last page. It's one of, it's one of our team members at Paradise Advertising. Her name's Tara, but it, it, it's on, I think, let me see, it's on the last page. I'm pretty sure. Yes. I'll look for it. Very Last page, page seven. I was just going to add that information to when I send out to our members. Yeah, and I know this is a really long document, but there's a lot of useful information in it. So if you guys just want to take your time when you have extra time to read it, it, it's, it may be very helpful to you depending on what your business is. Right. And it's like Gail at the Spring Hill, she'll probably want to send this to her marketing uh, people that do her marketing for her just so they can see, you know, what page we're on, what we're doing. That's a lot of great information. Thanks, Julie. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get some more updates. Gretchen, do you want to give us an update? Sure, I'm back and open and um, I've actually already gotten one um, inquiry through my website about doing some deliveries. So um, I love the idea of all of us sort of tagging each other so that we can, um, you know, as you see a post, share it, you know, out to your people. As I see a post here locally, I'm trying to share those out as much as I can. 
Um, so doing a special for the month of May, 50% off of delivery. So that's a $25 savings. Um, just trying to get it kicked off and restarted. That sounds great, Gretchen. There's some new people on today's call that may not be familiar with your business. So you just want to explain how you're different than. Um, oh, sure. So organized occasions concierge. So I am a grocery delivery service. Um, what separates me from just ordering your groceries like through Walmart for delivery or through Instacart is that I have relationships and partnerships with the property managers. So when the um, renters, visitors um, reserve their, their unit, um, then they can tell me who that property management company is. I reach out to them and I gain access to that unit before they get there. So um, if you've tried to order recently um, groceries, you know that Walmart pickup, you can be two to three days before there's an available pickup time, right? So with mine, um, you send me your list, I um, go and do the shopping for you. And then it, the benefit is that one, you gain back all of those hours that you would have spent shopping but also now the added benefit is our visitors are not exposed to us and we're not exposed to our visitors because I'm the only one that's actually going into the store. I'm the only one that's doing the shopping and delivering it to their unit. I don't have any contact with them in the unit because I get there before. They don't have any contact with me. So at a time when we're trying to kind of keep our cooties to ourselves, uh, this is a great way to do that. Awesome, awesome. And about like you'll go like to the seafood market and yeah. yeah so local, local um, specialty shops. So if you wanted, um, you know, fresh steamed crab legs, um, I can get those picked up and delivered to your unit with all your other groceries. Um, if you wanted me to go get a growler of craft beer from Yield Brothers Brewery, I can do that. So it just makes it to where they can experience local without actually having to be out so much in the local community. So I, I try to always promote as many of the local businesses as I can, because I want people to know that we have all of that available, but maybe this summer isn't the one where they need to go and do the tasting at the Yield Brothers. Maybe instead, let me pick up a growler and bring it to you. It's a great service. We're so excited to be here. Thanks. You're welcome. Chuck, do you want to unmic yourself and give us some updates from Windjammers? Don't forget to unmute yourself. It's down there. Oh, we lost them. Oh, you're Are you still there? Yes. Hello? Hey, we can hear you. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Windjammers, uh, we are adhering to all these standards. You know, we're, we're at 50% capacity. We, we've taken all the uh, bar stools away from the bar to try to minimize uh, close contact. Um, a big thing that's really blowing up the social media right now is uh, free yoga on the beach Saturday, June 6th. Every Saturday from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock, we have free yoga on the beach, and it's really blown up on social media. So we're, we're hoping it really catches on with the local community and the, the uh, tourist community. Um, other than that, we're really looking forward to a really big uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we've, we've got our staff built up. It's taken a while to get our staff levels back up to where we can handle a large uh, influx of, of customers on, on, on Saturday and Sunday. But other than that, we're just looking forward to a really big weekend. Thanks, Chuck. We appreciate you being part of today's call. Uh, let's see, Corey Mobley with Johnny Houston. Do you want to unmic yourself and give an update? Are you still there? I know sometimes he's multitasking. Yeah, hey, hey, I'm here. Um, no update, really. I mean, as you guys know, we're open for business, which we're blessed and thankful for all the support and We'll continue to, you know, follow procedures and protocol and wait for the next phase of the reopening. So hopefully, you know, bars will come into play and um, 
you know, we'll be able to see. I mean, we're getting full house early, early on, and people are going on a longer way than normal because we just don't have the amount of space that we used to. But we're getting there, so we're taking a step in the right direction. Thanks, Corey. And do you have anything from the Florida Restaurant Lodging Association that you need to update us on? Um, at the time, the FRLA, no, we don't have anything. I know we're working uh, on trying to, you know, get an extension to 24 weeks for the PPP program, uh, just because some business owners are suffering. Luckily, we were blessed. We had 90% 90, 90 of our staff retained, and I've hired about a dozen more people. So uh, we're up up in arms, but they are, like, as far as our staff level goes. But some people struggling to get some of their staff back, especially as we know with the uh, unemployment and everything like that, the ones that are on it, taking advantage of it or whatever you want to call it. But uh, that, and then, like I said, just hopefully June 1, we'll see phase two. And uh, like I said, we'll just continue to move forward. Everything's supposedly to be on a two week time frame. So other than that, nothing. As soon as we have something else that's new, as you know, I'll keep you tuned in so you'll Thank have it. Thank you, Corey. We appreciate it. Always. Julie has something she wanted to add. Do you want to unmute yourself? And Yeah, I just want to give a huge shout out to Corey and what he does for us being our representative for the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. He does such a great job. And I also want to um, say when Chuck was given the update and he mentioned the yoga on the beach, this is a perfect example, okay? of my department partnering with the yoga studio now partnering with wind jammers so that full circle of a destination partnering with a local business partnering with another local business has really uh i gotta give a huge shout out to monica and my department for making that happen she made that happen and so stuff like that is critical if everyone would try and utilize us to do just um, different type of stuff like that, that's what we want to do, you know. So now look what we've started this yoga on the beach, and so hopefully this becomes a thread of our destination. It helps our destination. It helps the yoga studio. It helps the pier, you know. So any new and interesting, exciting things like this, no matter if it's a restaurant or a yoga studio. See, we want to partner with people, free to them, of course, no charge, to do interesting things. So use your imaginations when you're thinking of stuff and then just reach out and ask me, is there any chance, you know, we could do this with you guys? And so Monica is really good in my office about setting stuff like that up. So that was a perfect example of a destination partnering with two businesses, okay? Awesome. We like that too. <laughs> hand clap. Is this the thing that you have the hand clap? You can all like put your hand up. Okay. Uh, let's see who else. There's a couple of people on the call that I don't recognize their name and I apologize. Rhonda Deaton, if you'd like to give an update on a business or organization you're with, if you want to unmic yourself and introduce yourself. Hi, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm Rhonda Deaton. I'm Air Service Development Manager for Pensacola International Airport. And our updates are that our numbers are trending in the right direction as far as TSA and whatnot and the passengers that we are processing here. We are keeping uh, communication lines open with all of our airlines. Fortunately, they're all still here. <laughs> although with limited service as per the uh, Legislative CARES Act. Um, I think what everybody should be mindful of from a fly market perspective is uh, right now the airlines are providing the minimal service levels as required by that CARES Act. So part of uh, accessing that money, that funding was to provide minimal service and to, to not furlough your staff, okay? That only lasts through September 30th. Now, October 1st is gonna be a new day. We don't know what the airlines are doing or need to do to stop the bleeding. Some of them are losing millions of dollars a day. 
So um, I just wanted to, uh, I'm pretty new to the area. Uh, next, next month I'll have been here a year, but I'm not new to the aviation and, and air service and, or tourism industry. Um, but uh, just know that uh, this airport is here for you. Um, I'd like to meet with you probably individually, Chandra, at some point, or Julie, and understand what your goals and objectives is with, are with regard to the fly market. Um, my marketing manager, Louis Garvin, is uh, doing a fantastic job of um, creating a campaign to uh, what's called At The Ready. We've got to make uh, the flying public comfortable let them know that we're here. Let them know of the destinations that we have. We had 22 destinations at this time last year, and now we have eight. So if that gives you an indication of, of where this industry is going. Um, I would love to um, increase my participation with your organization to keep you abreast of exactly what is happening here. We are going to need a regional, and just like Julie was saying, collaborative approach so these airlines know we want them here. It's not the airport's job to create the demand for service. It's the region's job. It's visitors, it's businesses, uh, it's chambers of commerce. It's, it's the community who creates the demand for business. And where there's demand, the airlines will come. So, and y'all know there aren't a lot of these airlines left. And now there's gonna be 450 something commercial airports vying for the service from the same four legacy carriers and a smattering of low cost carriers. So it's gonna get very competitive, um, but like I say, we're here for you. Um, Lewis and I will do our best to boots on the ground to understand what's going on. We may ask, just keep us abreast of what you have going on so we can share that with the airlines. They wanna know who's coming from where, from what destinations. If you have a destination that you are seeing a little bit of service from, or there's a pocket of service, reach out to me. We will run the data. We'll do what we can to see if we can develop a business plan for that service and reach out to the airlines. Uh, we are basically here for you. We're here to serve your needs. We're here uh, as an economic development engine for the region. So I appreciate you having me on the call. I look forward to meeting you all in person, attending your meetings, and we'll share with you what we have going on here from a uh, fly perspective. Thanks, Rhonda. And I apologize that I didn't remember your name. I have emailed you back and forth. As soon yeah, as you know, I, I'm actually from California and I never heard of a Rhonda until I moved to the South and they're everywhere. So yeah. I'm not surprised, I'm not surprised. You've, Probably, you know, got me mixed up with somebody. But nevertheless, you have my contact and information now, and I look forward to meeting you all when, when time permits in person. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. For part of our call today. That was great that everyone... Appreciate that. Knows. Thanks for having me. Shanda? Hey, hey, Rhonda, I've met you before. I've been to your meetings um, before, and Monica has too as well, my staff. Yes, Monica. Oh. Yeah, you know Monica. Uh -huh. <laughs> Anyways, and she always makes sure and brings me back the updates when she comes. But um, we will, obviously, um, we can gather a data sheet for you to send to you by the end of the month, you know, of what we're seeing That'd that will be, be you as our destination. And I know that you probably already know that um, our destination is, 90 plus percent drive market yes and pensacola's is obviously a little different especially because they have andrews air uh andrews institute but even though it's a gulf breeze but regardless most of them stay in pensacola but i do feel like um it's gonna be challenging for the, for your airport in the near future and i know i know you guys already know that but we will do whatever we can to help supply you with information yeah, I appreciate that. And do you know, I didn't even know, to be honest with you, I didn't know that there was a Santa Rosa County Tourism Development Office. I thought Monica was visiting on just on behalf of economic, Shannon, over on, on behalf of economic development. Yeah, so. I didn't know you had an umbrella under there, so I need to understand your structure. 
Yeah, when uh, I first met you, I was under economic development. It's kind of changed over the last couple of years. It's okay. Or, so now we have our own, it's not under economic development anymore. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and I'm interested to get to know, I'm going to, you know, obviously when we get off here, I'm going to log on. I'm going to do a little bit of research and find out sure. a little bit more what I can. I'll send you an email. Feel free to, if you already have my contact information, when you gather that data. We also hear... Um, we gathered data as well in our parking before COVID happened. Um, our parking was uh, busted. I mean, in that we didn't have enough parking. We had 2.2 million people flying in here, in and out of here. So our parking uh, manager, we actually have a list of where these um, license plates where people are coming from. Wow. We, we, we collect that data. Wow. So if they're coming in here, that's a good opportunity for you guys to reach out to that constituency yeah. to market the unique qualities and attributes that you have of Navarre, not just Pensacola Beach. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's all about communicating and sharing, I think. So we, I think collectively, like you started your, you know, update on, we, we've got to be collective collaborative and really all communicate with each other because when the region flourishes we all flourish you know absolutely so we're here for you don't don't anybody on this call please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions or or uh comments or data or anything that you want to share please feel free to send it my way hey shanda could you send Rhonda our plan that i sent you earlier or from our department yes thank you that'd be great thank you make sure she gets another copy. Uh, let's see. Okay, another name, Meredith Pittman, and I apologize if I know you. Will you unmute yourself and introduce yourself? Hi, yes. Can you all hear me? Yes. Awesome. Um, I actually work with Gail um, at the Spring Hill Suites. I'm part of the management company, um, so I'm actually in a corporate office in Atlanta, um, but so I handle a lot of the social media for the Spring Hill. So I just wanted to tune in and see what the updates were. I'd like to stay in tune with um, all the changes that are going on in the area with local businesses. And as things kind of start to open up, I want to make sure that um, I'm on top of, you know, what's going on so I can respond to guests that are looking into coming to the area that have questions. Um, and so I can hopefully engage with y'all a lot more on social media. So that's pretty much it. Kaylee? Yeah. Hi, Meredith. Um, I don't know. Were you here from the beginning of the call? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. I was on a little hidden mode. It's okay. So Gail's probably got that document that we created and um, talks exactly about some of those social media points that I wanted to make sure you guys all had. Yeah. Thank you. I saw it posted in the chat. So I already, already downloaded it and look forward to reading through it. Thank you so much. Right. Absolutely. Thanks, Meredith. I'm glad that you were part of today's call. And who else is in here that hasn't talked? Lynn, you already um, gave me a message through the thing. Did you want to say something else, Julie? No. Okay. <laughs> I saw your hand. <laughs> no, sorry. I have to mute myself. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Is that Monica, the telephone, the telephone number? Is that Monica? Five two nine five one six two. Who is that? Is that anybody that wanted to talk or give an update from your business or organization? And it's sometimes Monica calls in. Monica, is that my Monica? It should be. She's muted. Let me see if I can unmute her. Hello, telephone person. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, yes, this is Monica. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to unmute myself. Did you want to give any updates? I know Julie gave a lot of information, but we always love hearing from you. Um. I have just the videos. If um, you have any 
promo videos you would like to have posted on our socials, please send that my way. Um, I've been going through pages this past week um, asking for files. So um, we want to promote you guys. So send us some promo videos or um, if you want to collaborate and talk about different things we can do, I'm here to help. Thanks, Monica. Thank you so much. Um, Ms. Mm -hmm. did you want to unmute yourself and say anything? I'm not sure if everyone knows you. You're the previous owner of Benny R's. Ms. Paula? Oh, yeah, I just want to say good afternoon and thank you all for working so hard. That uh, it's uh, very interesting. And uh, the uh, Navarre is the best place to live and visit. <laughs> That's how most people get here. They visited at one time or another. <laughs> yes, yes. That's how. <laughs> I have a story about that. I'll pay you someday. Okay, thank you. Okay, does anybody else need to do any follow ups? Our next meeting is scheduled for uh, Thursday, June 4th at 2 o'clock. Um, we changed it to 2 to um, make it a little, little easier for the TDO uh, staff to uh, be part of the call. Oh, Mike Sandler is raising his hand. I didn't see his face. He's the turtle. <laughs> uh, I've been working on other projects, but uh, uh, huh? obviously, every hopefully everybody knows we are in turtle nesting season. And, and one of the things that our turtle patrol uh, has been noticing since uh, the beaches are back is we've been collecting an awful lot of uh, man-made things that don't belong on the beach naturally every morning out on turtle patrol. Uh, we've been filling up the back of a, of a UTV every morning for the last, since the, since the beach came, came back open. So in your, uh, in everybody's marketing, uh, if, if they could, uh, we would appreciate that extra emphasis of keeping the beach clean, that if you take something out to the beach, you know, take it with you. And uh, we, we understand occasionally, you know, the little ones, uh, they're playing in the sand and they leave a little something and, uh, you know, a plastic shovel or, or whatever, sometimes things get away. But we really uh, appreciate there's, there's some things that aren't from the little ones, like uh, tent frames and chairs and uh, a lot of things. So we would really appreciate that uh, the emphasis on leaving our beach uh, pristine and maybe just leaving footprints. So if we could, if we could get that message pushed out uh, in all of the marketing, uh, not just for here, I'm, I'm sure that everybody from, from uh, Orange Beach down to, down to Destin uh, has the same problems. And so we would appreciate that. Thanks, Mike. I didn't mean to ignore you. I just wasn't thinking the turtle had anything to say. I'm sorry. And Jamie from Navarre Press, we appreciate you being part of today's call. You're the bird. Did you um, want to give an update on anything or ask a question? No, I mean, just as, as always, guys, if you have anything, have any questions that you want answered or anything you're curious about, always reach out to me and, you know, we love to if you've got really cool events or anything like that coming up, we like to be a part of that too. So just keep us in the loop. Thanks, Julie. I mean, Jane. <laughs> and thanks again, Julie. We appreciate you spending some time with us and being part of today's meeting. It was a, a full of a lot of important information. And now is it is more important than ever that everybody works together and Y'all are all doing a great job, and we appreciate you being part of our community. And if there's anything we can help you with, um, please ask. And y'all have a good afternoon. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Shanda. Thank Bye. you. Bye -bye. Thanks, Shanda. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.